Big toes together, knees wide, sitting your hips back towards your heels, reaching the arms forward. And just take a few deep breaths, settle into that very first child's pose. Right, notice how your body's feeling today at the beginning of our practice. And then connect your ujjayi pranayama, breathing in and out through your nose. So lightly constricting the back of your throat. You should start to hear the sound of your breath. Make each inhale and exhale a little bit longer. Walk your hands to the right side of the mat, placing the left hand on top of the right. So you feel a little stretch to that left side of your body. And then take it the other way. Walk it to the left side. Place the right hand on top of the left. When you're ready, we'll bring it to center to our tabletop position, to our hands and knees. So hands under the shoulders, knees under the hips. Inhale, drop the belly, arch your back and gaze up, cow pose. And then exhale, tuck your chin in, round your back for cat. Inhale as you arch. Exhale as you round. Well, one more time. Inhale to arch. Exhale as you round. And then after your last one, you find a nice neutral spine in the middle. Thread the needle, peel the right arm up, thread it through, put your head down, walk that left hand forward, maybe crawl it a little bit to the right, start to open up your shoulder and your back. Come back to tabletop to reset and switch sides, peel the left arm up, Thread it through and then walk that right hand forward and over to the left. Back up again to your tabletop position. Opposite arm and leg, right arm forward, left leg back, finding your balance here. And then as you exhale, pulling that knee and elbow in to touch or as close as you can get it. Inhale to extend it out and reach. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale, extend. One more time. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale as you extend and you can hold it and balance or you can bend the leg and take your right hand. See if you can catch hold of that left foot and find a little back bend there, kicking it back. Good, stretching it back out, placing it all down and then switching sides. Left arm forward, right leg back. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale, extend. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale as you extend. One more time. Knee to elbow, and then extend it out and hold, or reach around, grab the foot, and add that back bend in on this side. Stretch it out, extend it long, place it down, and then come into your first down dog. Plant your hands shoulder width, Tuck your toes, lift your hips up. Your feet should be about hips width distance apart. Bend one leg at a time, walking out your down dog, stretching the calves and the hamstrings or bending the elbows, just kind of moving around, noticing how your body feels today at the beginning of your practice in that first down dog. Shoulders away from the ears, starting to push your chest back towards your thighs. Over time, working those heels closer to the mat. And look forward, walk your feet to the front, take a few steps, ragdoll, feet hips width, bend your knees a lot, and grab opposite elbows. And then maybe shake your head yes, shake it no, relax your neck, you can sway a little bit side to side or forward and back, anything that feels good here. Release your hands, roll yourself up one vertebra at a time. When you get to the top, lift those arms up. Your right hand grabs your left wrist, pull it to the right for a standing side body stretch. And then switch your left hand, grabs your right wrist, pull it to the left side. Back to center. Interlace the fingers behind your lower back or hold onto a strap. Inhale, look up, open your chest and shoulders. Exhale, bend your knees a little and fold forward, keeping the hands interlaced.
Release the clasp of your hands. Inhale, lengthen your spine to a flat back. As you exhale, step to high plank. We'll modify our first chaturanga, dropping the knees to the floor, hugging the elbows in and just lowering all the way to the ground. Untuck your toes. Inhale, cobra pose, just finding a small back bend to start. Exhale, lower down. Push up to your knees to that modified plank. Then tuck your toes and meet back in down dog. Lift the right leg up, step it forward to a low lunge, drop your left knee down. Make sure your right knee's over your ankle and start with the hands on that right thigh. So you can sink into this left hip flexor. If you wanna add a little back bend, you can lift your arms up and your gaze up, maybe palms coming together. And lowering the hands back down either to the floor or blocks, half splits, straightening the right leg flexing the right foot and folding over your right leg. Rebend that leg, plant your hands and just go back to down dog. Reset for a moment in your down dog. And then when you're ready, switch sides. Lift the left leg up, step it forward, starting in our low lunge. Dropping the back knee down. Hands on the left thigh, sinking into that right hip flexor. If you want to add the back bend, lifting the arms up and the gaze up, maybe palms coming together. Lowering the hands down for your half split, straightening the left leg, flexing the left foot and folding over your left leg. And rebend it so you can get your hands back to the floor and step straight back to your downward facing dog. Looking forward, you can step or hop both feet up to meet your hands. Feet come together. Inhale, lengthen your spine to a flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Then we use our flat back. Inhale, reverse swan bend up to stand. Exhale, bring your hands to heart center. Tadasana, mountain pose. Sun A, Surya Namaskara A. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, swan dive down. Inhale, lengthen to a flat back. And then exhale, you can step or hop to chaturanga, low push up, either staying on the toes or lowering the knees. Then inhale, maybe to up dog or maybe staying with your cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Looking forward, hop or step your feet back to the front. Inhale, lengthen, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive up to stand. Exhale, hands to heart center. We're gonna do that full sun A two more times. Inhale, reach arms up. Exhale, swan dive down. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, step or hop to your chaturanga, low push up halfway down. Inhaling into your back bend, up dog or cobra. Exhaling, downward facing dog. Look forward, step or hop back to the front. Inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive up. Exhale, hands to heart center. One more time, last time. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, swan dive down. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, chaturanga, low push up. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Look forward one more time, hop or step to the front. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Take a deep breath, reset here standing. Today, we're not gonna do the traditional sun B, okay? We're, not, we're gonna skip that and do some other poses to warm up. From here though, lift your arms up and bend your legs for Utkatasana, chair pose. So squeeze your legs together, your knees and feet together. Now hold your legs in chair. Try to interlace your hands behind your lower back, the awkward way, the other thumb on top from whatever you did earlier. Inhale, look up, open your chest. As you exhale, fold forward, maybe straightening the legs. 
But if your legs don't feel ready to be straight, remember you can still keep a soft bend to those knees. Release the clasp of your hands. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, hop or step, chaturanga, low push up. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. From down dog, lift the right leg up. Step your right foot forward between your hands. Crescent lunge, Anjanasana. So you're on the ball of your back foot as you lift your arms up. Hips are square to the front. Back leg is straight and engaged, but you're bending into that front leg. Open it up from here to warrior two, Virabhadrasana B. Pivoting the back heel flat on the ground. Hips are open to the side wall, but you're gazing at your right hand. And you still have a nice deep bend in that right leg. Flip the right palm up. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, windmill the hands down, then step back. Chaturanga, low push up. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Other side lift, the left leg up. Take a big step forward, starting in our crescent lunge on this side. Find your balance, you're on the ball of the back foot, arms are up. Always making sure your feet are lined up with your hips here, not a tightrope, that way you feel more stable. Open it up, warrior two, Virabhadrasana B. Hips open, gazing at that front hand, nice big bend in that front leg. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, windmill the hands down and step your way back, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. And then take a moment in child's pose. I got to run downstairs real quick. So take a moment, child's pose, rest. I'll be right back. Okay, let's meet back in our downward facing dog. Reset there. And we're gonna look forward and you can either hop right to your prayer squat or just step your feet to the outside of the hands. Turn your toes out, malasana, hands to heart center. You can sit on a block here if you want. Use your elbows, push those inner thighs apart, press the chest forward, all right, lengthening the spine. You could stay here or you can open the arms by sliding the right shoulder inside that right knee, right hand down, and maybe peeling that left arm up. And then back to center and go the other way. If you open the arms, left hand down, right arm up. And back to center. Now, as you bring your hands down, bring your feet in just about hips width. So toes are gonna point forward for a forward fold, but feet about hips width. Pada Gustasana, peace fingers, grab your big toes. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold. Relax your neck. Let your elbows go out to the side and pull yourself towards your legs. Now, if you're ready to practice your crow pose, bakasana, remember crow is like the foundation for all the other arm balances, right? So the more we practice that, it's going to help us with the other arm balances. Plant your hands shoulder width. Bend your elbows a little bit. Make that shelf and put those knees up high on the shelf. The higher the knees are on the triceps, the closer to the armpits, the better. Remember, don't be afraid to bend the arms a lot. Lean forward, though, and stick out your chin. Don't look at your feet. Look forward and maybe start to float one foot or both feet off of the ground. Pushing the floor away, rounding the spine, pulling the abs in. Over time, the arms might get straighter, but make sure you get your balance first. If you stick out your chin and look more forward, you won't fall on your face. 
right? We don't want the knees to slide to the outside of the arms. We're really trying to keep the kneecap, the bony part of the knee on the back of the arm. That's why if you can get it a little closer to the armpit, it's easier because if it's close to the elbow, it's just going to slip right off. Give it a couple attempts, right? When you've had enough playing with your crow, we'll meet back in that child's pose again, reset for a moment. Any variation of child's pose too. If you prefer the one with the knees together, you can do that or knees wide. Then when you're ready to move, we'll meet back in downward facing dog. Lift the right leg up. Step it forward, back to your crescent lunge. Anjanasana, high crescent lunge again. And this time we'll take it into our airplane, Dagasana, sweeping the arms back, palms face the floor, floating that left leg up, flexing the foot, making sure we square off our hips as we get our balance here. Standing splits, hands to the floor or the blocks. As your nose starts to get closer to that right leg, the left leg tries to lift up higher without opening the hip. If you wanna grab the ankle, right hand to the back of the ankle to help you fold a little deeper. Then bring your fingertips back to the floor, bend your right leg and take a really big step back, crescent lunge, lift arms back up. Open it up, warrior two, Virabhadrasana B, heel to arch alignment. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale into side angle, modified side angle with the elbow on the thigh or extended side angle with the right hand on the floor or block, maybe reaching the left arm forward. Creating that long line from your left hand to your left foot. Lift back up to warrior two. Inhale, reverse again. This time as you exhale, coming into half moon. Ardha Chandrasana, walking that right hand six to eight inches in front of your right baby toe. Flexing the left foot, keeping that hip open. If your standing leg is not straight, try to find a block and put it underneath your right hand or a water bottle or something else to help you straighten your standing leg. Bend the standing leg, go back to warrior two, big step back. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, windmill your hands down to the front, step your way back, chaturanga, low push up. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Lift your left leg up, step your left foot forward, crescent lunge, reaching the arms up, finding your balance here in your lunge. Airplane, Dagasana, sweep the arms back, Palms face the floor, floating the right leg up, finding your balance, squaring off the hip. Always focusing the eyes when we're in any kind of balancing pose. Standing splits, hands come down to the floor or the blocks, pulling your nose closer to the left leg as you lift that right leg higher. Maybe left hand grabs the back of that ankle to help you get a little deeper. Good. Both hands back to the floor so you can carefully step back to crescent lunge. Reset the feet and lift your arms back up. Open it up, warrior two, pivot the back heel down. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale into modified or extended side angle, Utita Parsva Konasana. So whichever variation you did on the first side, try to repeat that on this side as best you can to even it out. Lift back up to your regular warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale into half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. Walking that left hand forward about six to eight inches, usually closer to that left corner of the mat. Flexing that right foot, opening up the hip here as you balance, aiming for both legs to be straight and for that flying leg to be about parallel to the floor. So it's not a standing split, right? It's a little bit different. Carefully step back to warrior two, reset the feet. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, windmill the hands to the front. Step back, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. 
Exhale, down dog. Lift the right leg up. We'll step into the outside of the right hand, lizard pose. Drop your back knee down, untuck the toes. So hands, elbows, or blocks right on the inside of that right foot. Just stretch into your right outer hip here. I'll come back up to the hands and we'll take that quad stretch where we turn our right foot out about 45 degrees, put the left hand down and twist your right arm back. And you don't have to grab the foot, you can hold here and just kind of sink those hips down deeper into that stretch. Or you can take your right hand and try to grab that left foot and pull it in towards you to get more of a quad stretch in that back leg. Good, let go. And then we'll meet back in our down dog. Just step back, reset for a moment in your downward facing dog. Lift your left leg up, step it outside your left hand, regular lizard pose first, toes pointing forward, untuck your back toes, hands, elbows, or blocks on the inside of your left foot, stretching into that left hip now. Now coming back up to the hands, turn your left foot out about 45 degrees. Right hand plants down this time to twist and peel the left arm back, holding there or maybe grabbing that right foot, pulling it in, stretching that right quad. Let go, we'll meet back again in our down dog, reset there. Then look forward, step or hop both feet to the front, roll yourself up to stand one vertebra at a time. Turn to face one of the long edges of your mat. So open up your feet wide and parallel. Bring your hands to your lower back for a little baby back bend, kind of like a standing camel. And then fold forward, prasarita padottanasana, straddle forward fold, walking the hands through the legs, folding here, stretching into the hamstrings. Now stay in the fold, but walk your hands over to the left leg and try to grab onto the ankle or the calf and pull your nose closer to that left leg. And then take it the other way. Walk it towards the right leg, pull your nose closer to the right leg. And then bring it to center, we'll come to our knees for frog. So we're gonna do frog first and then we'll come back up for the straddle split. So come down to your knees, wiggle your knees apart, flex your feet, make sure you have that nine digit angle, ankle in line with knee, hip in line with knee, and then come down to the elbows. And if you don't feel it, use your hands, try to get those knees even wider apart so that you should feel it in those inner thighs here. And just take a few breaths here, right? And then we'll go into the straddle splits, which is a little bit deeper stretch as well. Now, if you really like this stretch and you wanna just stay here longer, you can stay here or you can come back up to your hands and feet 
and come into Samo Konasana, standing straddle splits by toe healing the feet as far as they'll go. The standing version means your feet stay flat, right? They might slide out or turn out, but we don't lift our toes up and you get as low as you can. And then also maybe come to your elbows. But if your elbows don't reach, you can also be on your hands or your blocks and take a few more breaths wherever you're at, either the standing straddle splits or staying in your frog. Good. Press up to your hands carefully, toe heel those feet back in. If you're on your knees, come back up to your feet, kind of start where you were before in that wide legged fold and gently bend one knee at a time, shake it out a little bit. And then we'll find a flat back, bend both knees, hands to hips, slowly come up. Step to the front. I'm just gonna step back so you can see me. So before we do the flying pigeon, let's do standing number four by itself, and then we'll add in the arm balance the second time through. So hands to prayer position, right foot goes across, making this fit your four, flexing the foot, because this is how the arm balance starts. Then bend your left leg and try to get your elbows onto your shins. The more you bend the left leg, the better. If you can, get your fingertips or your hands to the floor, because that's the setup for the arm balance. All right, so just take a few breaths, still holding here. Then come up, shake it out, and try the other side. So left foot goes across, flex that foot, bend your right leg. First goal is getting those elbows towards the shin, and then maybe fingertips or hands to the floor. And just taking note, if one side does feel different, notice which side is more open, which side it's easier to get the hands to the floor, because generally that's probably going to be the side that's easier to do the arm balance. Good, come up, shake it out. Now, if you want, you can watch the screen first. So same thing, I start with that number four, but I have to get my hands to the floor. So that's why I said it's a combination of hip flexibility and strength, right? Because if you don't have the flexibility to get your hands to the floor, you can't exactly do arm balance. If you have blocks, you could put your hands on the blocks to make it a little easier if you have two blocks, okay? But my shin is gonna rest on both arms. I'm literally putting my shin on both arms. My toes here, I flex them back tight. See how my toes are touching my arm? They're not off to the side, they're touching it. Then I have to lean forward a lot. That's the scary part, right? Just like with the regular pro. Leaning forward until my big toes the last thing on the floor and I take this bottom foot and I squeeze it up towards my hip. And you can keep it bent for now. Eventually, like the picture in your book, once you get comfortable there, you can extend the flying leg. Look at how close my face is to the floor, right? I have to lean really far forward and bend my arms a lot. Remember, the leg is resting on my arms. So I'm going to show you on the other side. So if my left foot's across, again, I can get my hands to the floor. Now, sometimes what helps, maybe don't put them so close. Maybe bring them a little more forward, kind of lean forward into it if you are having a hard time with getting the hands to the floor. Then again, bend my arms like chaturanga. My shin is on my arms. The more I lean forward, the lighter this right foot gets. You can hold here. If you're really comfortable with it, extend that flying leg high. Ekka Pada Galavasana, flying pigeon. So let's try it. If you're not ready to do the arm balance, repeat your standing number four, right? Do this standing number four on the right side, count five breaths, then do this standing number four on the left side and count five breaths. Again, if you're having a hard time with getting the hands to the floor first, try to bend your leg more. If that still doesn't work, you can use blocks or you can walk your hands more forward and kind of like fall into it to get your hands on the floor. Yeah, like that, Eva. <laughs> there you go. And then you bend your arms and you try to put your shin across both arms and your toes, they flex back and squeeze onto that tricep. Nice. That's the setup. Even if you don't lift the leg today, maybe just working the setup, right? Or again, maybe just like crow, it's one of those things where you might hold it for one second. And then the next time you try it, two seconds, right? And a little bit further each time. That's it, Eva, you had it. Everything looks right, that was good. Make sure you try both sides too, right? Whichever variation you're doing, if you're doing the arm balance, if you're doing the standing number four, attempt the other side. You might find you only get it on one side at first, but it's still important to try both sides.
And there's no rush, right? If you want to try it a couple times, go for it. If you feel like you've had enough and you need a break, you can rest in child's pose. Good, finish up your last rep, whichever one you're on, balancing out the sides. And then eventually we'll meet in child's pose, this time bring our knees together so you can take your arms alongside you and really let your shoulders round forward. Let your arms relax. Take a few moments to reset here from that arm balance. When you feel ready, meeting back in your down dog. And we're gonna look forward, step back to the front, roll yourself back up to stand, dancer pose, Natarajasana. Take your left arm, lift it up to the ceiling, take your right hand and grab your right foot or ankle. And you can go inside or outside, your choice. And then you lift that leg up. So it's a balancing pose as well as a back bend. Focus on the balance first, and then as your balance feels comfortable, you can extend more into that back bend. And then release and try the other side. We're reaching that right arm up, left hand inside or outside on that left foot or ankle, and then slowly lift that left leg up behind you, finding your dancer pose on this side. Once you feel like you've evened out both sides, we'll meet back in our Tadasana, mountain pose, feet together, hands to heart center, and reset, standing up nice and tall. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, swan dive down. Inhale to a flat back, but don't go to chaturanga, just step back to plank as you exhale. And then lower to the ground, all the way down to the floor. Good. Take your arms by your hips like airplane arms. Squeeze your legs together. We're gonna to do a few variations of our locust, Shalabhasana. Lift your chest, your arms, your legs, lifting everything up, finding that back extension and holding for five, four, three, two, and one. When you release, let one ear come to the mat, let everything relax. Forehead or chin back down. You can repeat that or interlace your fingers together at your lower back. And then lift everything back up. And if you have the hands interlaced, try to lift them away from your tailbone and hold. Five, four, three, two, one. Release. Bring your other ear to the mat. And then either repeating locust or moving on to our bow pose, Dhanurasana, bending the legs. Both hands go to the outside of the ankles. Knees can be about hips width distance or just slightly wider, but not too wide. And then kick back through your shins, Dhanurasana. You're lifting the chest, but by kicking strongly through your shins. Imagine you're kicking your feet and your shins to that back wall. Hold, last five, try to breathe into that back bend. Four, three, Two on one, release. Let one ear come down. Let go of your feet. Keep your legs bent and windshield wiper your shins from one side to the other, gently releasing the lower back. When you're ready, pressing back to one more child's pose, resetting the spine. From here, we're gonna make our way to a seated position. So just swing your legs around. Open up your legs for seated straddle splits. Upavishta Konasana. So Sama Konasana was the standing straddle splits. This is the seated one. Flex your feet, try to get your legs as wide apart as you can. And then take your right hand and grab your right leg or foot and reach your left arm over your ear. Looking under your armpit to the ceiling, creating that side body stretch. Then take it to the other side. Reach up and over to the opposite side.
As you come back up, keeping the feet flexed, walking your hands forward, folding as far forward as you can into that seated straddle split. Now staying low, walk your hands towards the right leg and this time fold over the right leg, bringing your nose towards your knee or your shin. And crawl your hands through the middle, low, walk all the way over to the other side and fold over the left leg. Then go right back to the middle and see if you can just take a few more breaths and fold a little bit deeper, All right? Sometimes the longer you hold the poses, the deeper you can get into that stretch, right? Because it starts to open up a little bit more. And crawl your hands in, shake out your legs, take your time. Bring your legs all the way together. Seated forward fold, Paschimottanasana. So flexing the feet, Sitting up nice and tall for one more seated stretch, folding over your legs, grabbing the legs, the feet, using a strap, whatever you need here. Just make sure you keep the feet flexed. Slowly roll yourself up and then roll all the way down onto your back. Hug your knees in, give a little rock side to side. Massage the back here. Happy baby, grabbing onto the inside edges of the feet. Flex those feet, lengthen your tailbone to the floor. Actively push into your hands, down into your feet, so like you're trying to push your knees to the floor and the outside of your ribs. You'll feel that hip stretch, and then you can add a little rock side to side to massage the back as you do so. And hug the knees back into the chest. Keep your right knee hugging in, extend the left leg long. Give your right knee a squeeze towards your right shoulder. And open the right arm like a T. Use your left hand to twist that leg across your body, coming into your spinal twist. Let's bring it back to center. Hug both knees into your chest to neutralize the spine in between sides. Then keep your left knee hugging in, extend the right leg long. Squeeze the left knee to the left shoulder. Open the left arm like a T. Use your right hand now to twist that left knee across your body to the right side, taking your spinal twist the other way, coming into your last pose before your Shavasana. We'll bring everything back to center one more time, hugging both knees into your chest, wrapping your arms around your shins, bringing your forehead up to your knees so you're curling up into a tight little ball and giving yourself a big hug and then letting it go as you come into your Shavasana. Final relaxation. Extending the legs long, letting the feet fall open wide. Arms relaxing alongside you, palms facing up. And then taking your shoulders and shrugging them down away from your ears so that your neck is long. 
clear away any last remaining thoughts here. And just take one more nice deep inhale through the nose. Exhale all the air out the mouth and let the muscles relax deeper into the floor. Slowly begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Start to bring some small movements back into your body. Maybe draw in a couple circles with the wrists and ankles, moving them in both directions. Maybe gently moving your head a little bit side to side. Anything that feels good to you. When you feel ready, reaching the arms overhead, reaching the legs long, creating that nice full body stretch, getting as tall as you can. And then hug your knees into your chest, roll over to one side, coming into a fetal position. Use the hands to help press you all the way up into a comfortable seated position, crossing the legs, sitting up tall. Hands come together at heart center, Anjali Mudra. And take a couple last deep breaths here, scanning your body, noticing how it feels after your yoga practice today. And take one more nice deep inhale through your nose. Exhale all the air out the mouth, letting it go. And lifting your hands to your forehead, your third eye center, and bowing forward. Namaste.